morning. Let's bring in the Shadow Immigration Minister, Dan Tien. Dan, good morning to you. How relieved are you about the Fadden result on the weekend? Well, Pete, it was a good outcome, a 4% swing on the primary vote uh, to us. Uh, that's, that's a good victory, a good solid victory, shows that our messaging was right, that the government isn't addressing cost of living pressures, which is the number one issue which is, a fa which is facing Australians at the moment. And it shows if we put in the hard work, uh, present the case, uh, then we are very, very competitive. And now what we've got to do is make sure we continue to do the hard work, holding the government to account, and we can be very competitive at the next election. You were always expected to win it, but you needed that one for morale, didn't you? Well, it's really important when you have by-elections that you go out and test, because it's a real test with the Australian people, what's happening on the ground. And we were able to do that. We were able to present a case that the Albanese government is not addressing cost of living issues and doesn't seem to be able to. I think people say that the, the Prime Minister seems to be trying hard but he's not succeeding. And I think they're starting to realise that, that trying hard just isn't good enough when your household budget is facing the type of pressures that it is at the moment. And I think they're wanting to see more now from the government. They, they obviously have given Anthony Albanese a chance for the, for the first year, and Australians are very fair-minded like that. And they said, let's give him a go. And I think now they're sort of going, well, trying isn't enough. We want to see real results and real outcomes when it comes to our household budget. OK, news poll out this morning shows a drop in support, not just for the government, but also your numbers have come down a little too. Are you both on the wrong path? Well, I think the most important test that you can ever have is when you actually go to the people. And we saw that in the Fadden by-election on the weekend where we went to the voters. And the voters said that what we were saying, that the government isn't addressing the cost of living pressures, doesn't seem to know or understand how to address those cost of living pressures is their number one concern. So we've got to make sure we keep focused on that, mm. that we can put alternative policies forward when it comes to the next election and work hard, work really, really hard, because that's what the Australian people want to see from us. And we've got to keep making sure that whether there are tests like by-elections or when there are tests like how we're going to address issues like cost of living, which are confronting the Australian people, that we can provide a serious alternative. And that's what we're going to do. OK, but, but back on news poll, though, are you concerned that this may well be showing more of a drift to independence and teals, perhaps, at a national level? Well, news poll comes and goes, and in the end, there are only two tests that matter. There are by-election tests and then there's federal election tests, and that's what we've got to keep focusing on. Obviously, we're able to pass the test on the weekend, but the big test is coming up, and it could be coming up as early as next year. So we've got to make sure oh. we work hard for that, and okay. that's what we've got to focus well, on. Well, the next test being Cook, when do you expect that to happen, Dan? Uh, well, ultimately, that'll be uh, a, a decision <laughs> for, for Scott Morrison. Pre-selections have opened in New South Wales, so we'll have yeah. to wait and see whether he decides to nominate or not. And we, we'll know that over the, over the coming weeks. And I'm sure he's thinking about that, consulting with his family, and we'll have a decision over the coming weeks. OK, student visa numbers now more than 100K higher than it was under your old government. Dan, your thoughts on those levels? Well, there's no plan when it comes to immigration from the Albanese government. And all they're doing is putting greater pressure on rents and greater pressure on the housing crisis, which is facing this nation. 1.5 million extra people coming to Australia over five years. And the government is saying that is not impacting on the housing and rental crisis that this nation is facing. That just can't be possible. 1.5 million people coming. We've got international student numbers at record levels. Uh, we haven't seen these sorts of numbers in over 10 years. And the government is saying this is impacting, is, isn't impacting on rents and housing. Just 
It, it beggars belief. And they have to have a plan when it comes to immigration. Labor just can't seem to get it right ever when it comes to immigration, and they're not getting it right at no, the moment. It, it would definitely be having an impact on housing. There's no doubt about that. But uh, numbers, when it comes to student visas anyway, dropped to zero during COVID. So are we not just playing catch-up? No, we've played catch-up, and now we're getting ahead of the game. We're seeing numbers that we haven't seen uh, sit for over right. 10 years. Too and hard, too fast that, is what you're saying. Before we went into the... Too hard, too fast. When we went into the pandemic, there were 9,000 international students that were staying on after their courses. There's now 50,000 under the Labor government. They just don't seem to be able to manage immigration ever. And what we're seeing is all the negative implications of that when it comes to rents, when it comes to housing, when it comes to putting pressure on interest rates, because they don't have a plan. And also, we are terribly worried now that the international students are going to start doing some of these courses that lead to permanent residency, and we're going to see those courses become bogus courses. They just seem to always mess up immigration, the Labor Party. And the reason they mess it up is because they don't seem to be able to have a plan ever when it comes to immigration. Dan Tien, good to see you. We'll chat to you soon.